that's called in the glory land. Welcome to Coffee and Connect with Larry and Gloria from Nashville, Tennessee. We're going to have a packed program today. Oh, it's going to be. It's a busy week. Busy week. Really busy week. We have Mother's Day, yeah. and oh my. You, you made a statement. You said everybody is not a mother, but everybody has a mother. Yes, yes. Very profound, isn't it? <laughs> Very profound. With all you moms out there, my, we just honor you. I read something that was kind of cute. Marnie, it's good to see you. Oh, wow. Wow. We're going to have a fun program. But before I forget, I got so many things to do here. There was a, uh, this is cute. It says, a promise to my children that somebody, had, a lot of people sent me things through the years. Yes, yes. And they're just fun to read. I found this in my file. It said, my promise to my children, for as long as I live, I will always be your parent first and your friend second. I will stalk you, flip <laughs> out on you, lecture you, drive you insane, be your Worst nightmare, hunt you down like a bloodhound when I have to because I love you. When you understand that, I will know you have become re a responsible adult. You will never find anyone else in your life who loves, prays, cares, and worries more about you than I do. If you don't mutter under your breath, I hate you at least once in your life, I'm not doing my job properly. <laughs> well, listen, you know what I noticed? That you have ways of communication as a mother. The kids can look at you and tell you what you are thinking. Oh, I know. Yeah. I don't know about you, Marnie, but my kids read me. They yeah. listen to my voice. I mean, I if I'm not just laughing or smiling while I'm talking, is, are you okay, mom? Are you okay? Yeah. Is everything all right? I said, yes, everything is just mm -hmm. fine. And this is your birthday, and you got to realize you had a compound birthday. Yeah. May 17th, 1944. I was born on... Norwegian Independence Day, and my mother said, when I was born, everybody else lost their independence. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> but then you gave birth to the dawn on yes, your Yes, yes, I, yes, I had a very complicated pregnancy with her, and I was in bed for um, eight months, really, and uh, so when she was, I prayed, I said, God, your mom come up to my room just before she was born, and I had been, she took care of me in bed for eight months, mm -hmm. and she came, and she says, Missy, are you okay? And I said, Mom, I just want this baby. She says, what would you like your birthday? I said, I want this baby, and I want it now, because I had been bedridden <laughs> all this time, and it was so sweet, because she got on her knees, and she said, oh, dear Jesus, Gloria just asked one present for her birthday. She wants this baby today on her birthday. And boom, it wasn't long. I was on my way to the hospital and she was here. And now she is going to be 52, right? She yes. Was, now, how many days was it from the time you gave birth to LaDonna and when, when you had her on the bus? Oh, boy. Um, she, I was in the hospital three days, and then we left seven days later. On the ninth day, actually, on when she was nine days old, she, I packed up everything and put it in the coach, and we took off on yeah, the Yeah, she got lifetime pass, the bus transportation. Yes, yes. Her and LaShawn. <laughs> you think about LaShawn. Yes. He's going to be 56. And she's been on the road since she was, I think, a week old. Yes. And she's still on the road and yes. driving coaches. And Donovan was on the road. I think he was, because uh, I had complications with him, was in the hospital. And he was on the road um, at about 12 days old. And yeah. so they, they're, they're, my, I have a brother in Seattle, he used to call them little rugrats. He <laughs> says, he said, they're just like, you know, they've been on the, on the bus since they were little crawling on their knees. So anyway, but we honor all the yeah. moms. Yeah. But you know, uh, it was some time back that, that, you know, when we moved into Sisseton, and we set up our offices and everything. Mm -hmm. And then one of our employees called us and said, I'm sorry, but we're, we're moving from this part of the country to another part. Do you know of anyone that can work? Oh, oh, you mean in our office? Yeah. yeah we've, had, we've, had, we've had a couple, three people as our secretaries. And so here we were. You we, were a we, basket case. I was a basket case because <laughs> we had Ernie and Gloria Hutchins, which were so proficient. They were so wonderful. Ernie did booking and, yeah. and Gloria was a secretary. I mean, 
just, you know, it was just the perfect yeah. match. Yeah. And then they said they're moving. And I was like, no. I remember when Gloria called me. She said, uh, I, I need to tell you something. And I said, just tell me anything. Just don't tell me you're leaving. That's all I ask. Well, 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 really, we, and I mean, panic set in. And that was true. I, I seriously, I <laughs> mean, I, had a, I was a basket case in a small town of, you know, 3,500, who are you going to find to work? So I began to pray and put an ad in the assistant and courier. And there was, there were several that responded, but the ones who responded said, I will answer phones with nothing else, or I will do this, but I won't do anything else. And, you know, our ministry is ministry. It's not yes. a business. It's a ministry. That's right. And we needed to have somebody who had a heart for the laws. That new ministry. That new ministry yeah. had a heart yeah. for it. It was called. And so here we were just, you know, just devastated. And we were praying day after day. And, and we was going through the names and nobody was working out. And I was sitting in the living room, that big old overstuffed chair after right. our devotions. And I, I just said, God, I'm at the end. I don't know what to do. And my Did mother, my, my mother always said, Missy, when you don't know what to do, just say, here it is, Lord. I got to give it to you because I can't handle it. And so I just went and I said, here it is, Lord. It's yours because I can't handle this anymore. You're going to have to bring that person to us. It literally wasn't probably, oh, maybe 20 minutes later, the phone rang. And do you know who it was? It was Marnie's father, Jim Conzer. And he called and he says, oh, I hear that you're uh, looking for somebody. Now, we had met her uh, her mom and dad. We knew them from when they were uh, just recently married. They were just newlyweds. And so on this picture, uh, there is Jim and Kathy yep. right on there. the left side of both of those photos. And they were singing in a group. Um, what was the name of the group? Love Edified? Love Edified, yeah. Love Edified. So we knew her parents before Marnie ever was. Mm -hmm. And the <laughs> exciting thing about this is today we wanted to we wanted to just mention your mother's day. We wanted to mention yes. that it was Dawn's my birthday because uh, somebody sent me a note yesterday and they said, Do you know how to live to be 99? Do you know how to, do you know that, Marnie? I, I do not have okay. that. You no. go to bed. 99 years and then and then you wake up 99 years mm -hmm. in the morning and you will have made it at least to 99. I will keep that in mind. <laughs> that sounds that like mind. a good plan. <laughs> I was like, just keep breathing. And so we wanted, we thought, wow, you know, when we think back with well, this is a special week also because yeah. May 8th, 1998, in that living room, her dad called and I said, I said, uh, um, I said, do you have any suggestions? And he said, well, you know, is it our daughter, Marnie is at college. She's in, she's in, in, in uh, Ohio. Involved in the ministry. Involved in the ministry. And he said, she's coming home for the summer. I mentioned this a couple of weeks ago, but I want for those who didn't get the program. And so I don't know, you know, she, she, she might be interested in helping in a couple of weeks. I really can't speak for her, but I don't know. You could ask her if she would, you know, would be willing. Well, the good news was, was that Marnie had an eye on Kirk, which is now her husband. <laughs> and she had a crush on him. And I think he probably had a double crush on Marnie. Yeah. <laughs> so it was, it was kind of like, mm, you know, I don't know. And he said, I don't know. She's going to be around all summer. She's going to be leaving to go back or what? But anyways, you can talk to her, so. Yeah, but then they got involved in a couple of projects. They had a little house across town. Yeah, but that was before they were married. Yeah, that was before they were married, but they were, Kirk was working on it. And, but then after they got married, they decided to build in the country. Yes. Bit. And I loved it. I loved it. You were so happy. I was so happy. You know what he told me, Marty? <laughs> what did he tell you? I told her, I said, it's wonderful. They're building a house. They will be here for a while. They won't be running off. They won't, they, they won't be gone in six months or a year. Yes, keep building, keep building. So you got married. Oh, do you have your wedding picture there? I've got your wedding pictures. you have a couple of those? I do. I have some different photos that you had asked me to come up with. And yes. uh, this one just showing some of our oh, history. Yes. Um, now, this is cute because here is Marnie. Put the arrow on you. Right here. I'm in the middle. Yeah. And this is so 
of the cute pictures. And then here's Lance Lundstrom and Donovan in the yep. middle and Donovan. your brother. And they had they had their club. It says Lee Donovan's club, boys only. You could tell he was not happy. The girls were sneaking in the room there. But this little picture was on her desk for in our oh, office. Yes, and I thought, you know, so these kids grew up together. We did. And, uh, and then we you decided to build that. You know, here you are in school, cheerleading. <laughs> wow. Yeah. High school, and, and it's always so fun kind of sometimes when you're looking back and you see the different uh, – passions that you even had you know then so obviously a cheerleader and uh, I'll just go ahead and take that I like to kind of maneuver that into cheering other people on now just bringing encouragement and uh, just you know as a pastor's wife being able to hopefully uplift and and uh, help move people forward and uh, tinkering on the piano and then uh, the bottom photo I think if I remember correctly, um, was actually for a business uh, club opportunity that we were a part of. And so just fun to see those passions, um, you know, that that God had put in you, you know, yeah. and 25 the, and years the ago. Yeah. Yes. Because now you're the worship leader, you know, mm -hmm. and here you were. Did your mom teach you piano? Your mom plays beautifully. Yes, my mom plays amazingly. Oh. Um, you know, sometimes it's hard for mothers and daughters to uh, <laughs> teach one another certain things. Mm -hmm. So we did not um, we did not do that well. And so I actually took lessons from Jody Luchens, which was Janet oh. Griep's who oh. was worked in accounting here, um, yes. her daughter. And so I did, I that did not know that. Because mm -hmm. Janet played beautifully. I don't know if you ever heard her play. I never did. I, oh. Not that I know oh, of. Oh, Marnie. She yeah. was like your mom. She Just played play. so identical to your mom. Oh, fun. No, I'm yeah. sad I didn't. Wow. And then oh. there's this one. The reason oh. why I probably <laughs> stuck around. <laughs> So you started dating after you came back from, you were working and going to school in Columbus? In Columbus, Ohio. Yep. So there was a Bible college out there that I went to for two years. And so the first year um, I wasn't involved with anyone and then uh, came back for the summer and uh, Kirk and I had been friends for years and uh there was uh, Grady Long, who mm -hmm. uh, was also a dear friend of ours. And so we would just hang out for hours and just have fun, um, talk about everything. And then came back and something was a little different between Kirk and I. And we're like, whoa, what is this? So we kind of, uh, you know, dated while I was in the second year of college. But then when I came back, um, then that year, uh, things just got more serious because now I was around, and so yeah. So, so did you work at the that. college? Did you work at the college, Marnie? Yes. Yep. Yep. So I worked. Um, I worked in the, the the college was part of a big church, and so there were just a ton of different uh, areas. And if you really want to know a humbling story. My dad, working in different ministries, he had, you know, different connections, different people that he knew. And I had to have a job when I was going out to college because I did not have extra income coming in or have big loans or anything. And so I needed to support myself. And so he had called and kind of made a, a possible interview at the church. I didn't have a car, so needed to be close. And uh, I went to that interview and I they liked me but I failed the typing test and oh. I didn't know that I was going to be having a typing test. So I didn't prepare for it. I didn't, I, I hadn't been, um, you know, apprised that that was something that I needed to prepare for. And at that time, computers were not as oh. integrated <laughs> into society as oh. much as they are now. And so it just wasn't, you know, I'm sure I could pass it now. But, at, but I then so. I couldn't, <laughs> but then I didn't. And so it was devastating uh, because I didn't have a job when they left me and I'm like, what am I going to do? And another opportunity opened up and it ended up being just the right 
opportunity for me. Um, it really taught me a lot about ministry. It taught me a lot about uh, just as the person that I was under, she was like a go get it done person. And so she, I just, I learned a lot of just how to go after things and figure things out on your own. And um, I learned a lot about what to do in ministry and how to treat people. And I learned a lot oh, of how, what not to do, things that I would not want to do in uh -huh. ministry. And so it was just, it was such a great learning experience for me. Oh, that's so interesting. So yeah. then you came back. Yeah. And then and I came then, back and it wasn't. What made you decide to stay or was it Kirk? Tell me it was my yeah, job. Yeah. I mean, we, <laughs> he was a youth pastor at the church. My parents were there and I had said I would never, ever marry Kirk and I would never, <laughs> ever move back to Sisseton. And here I was eating my words. So you should never uh -huh. say never. I learned that lesson. Um, but yeah, no, we just, uh, we had similar passions for ministry and helping people. And um, yeah, we got married and it was going to be time to start a family and start dreaming. We love to dream and, and, you know, think what could we do? What is on our heart? So one of those things was that. Yeah. Oh, building there's our Marty. There yep. she is. Oh, I'm surprised you don't have your tool apron on that you usually had on. Yeah, so I did. It is in, in, in the, in the one photo where I'm up on oh. the roof, the apron's oh. on. <laughs> And where was Kirk taking the pictures while you were up there scaling? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's got to take the photos. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. So you started to build this because you wanted, I, I like your concept of being out of debt because that's definitely our, that's been our thrust ever, ever, ever. So, you know, so you just saved up money and built as you could. And how long did were you building on your home? It took us 10 years. And mm -hmm. we're still not completely done. We have a kitchen that we need to finish, and we have a bathroom that we should finish, and a deck that oh, well. should be finished. But um, we got we got that far, and we're we're so thankful. And we did have to take a a small a smaller loan, um, of which, uh, but we tried to do as much as we could without. Yeah, well, you definitely did. Yeah. You you crawled up ladders. Then you got your kids involved in it. Oh, absolutely. Everybody. I mean, it, it nobody just, sits around in that. Nobody sits around. Now. It was a family no. affair. That's so farm they style, have, really. they've done much. They've seen every part of, of the house. And, and sometimes if you talk to them, because we did live in the basement when um, they were younger, um, you know, sometimes you talk to them and they'll even say, man, I, I miss the open rafters or and I miss, you know, just seeing the wires run yeah, and just yeah, because really. that was part of their childhood. But well, what an experience and God was preparing them, mm -hmm. you know, for all of that. So that is good. Yeah, the question that I have is how long were you with us before you realized that this now it's been 25 years. So at the five year mark, two year mark, whatever it is that you kind of knew that this is where you you'd be over. At least for two years. <laughs> yeah, at least two years. You know, when I, as a young child, I would look at my mom. And as we're talking about Mother's Day, you know, she was the hero in my eyes. Like, I just loved everything yes. about her. I love what she did. And so one of the things that she did was work for Lowell Lundstrom Ministries in the office. And I remember... Um, at like you're you know preparing for graduation and they would be asking you things and like what would you like to do in the next five years or ten years and I'd be like I just really want to like help people and you know maybe work in a ministry like my mom does and and that was really something that was on my heart and so when this opportunity opened up just as I was leaving college and heading back to Sisseton which didn't always have a robust amount of opportunities. Mm -hmm. um, it was just, it was the perfect fit. It, it, it just, it, it was God's provision. And so as I started working there, and of course, as time goes on, um, we would learn more about one another. And, and I learned, um, 
I learned that Larry and Gloria are incredibly trustworthy people, full of integrity and someone that I wanted to join my life and my experience and learn from. And that wasn't always the case. And so it was something that was so rewarding and comforting for me and felt like I'm not going to waste my life if I'm joined with them, if I'm partnering with them, because Um, I believed so much in who they are, who you are, and also in the vision that they have, which is to see people come to Jesus. And so it was, it, it, it didn't take that long to find out that this is a great this is a great fit. Great fit. This is somewhere that I can grow, um, especially in the early days, um, just as I was learning more things about what it was like to be a secretary and, uh, you know, just the different things that would come along at LLM. Uh, There were just so many times that that, you know, you would have to kind of learn something and and dig in and figure things out. And uh, that became a great challenge to me. And And it still is. And and you do it well. You do keep me on my toes. And you you keep keep me me, on my toes. (laughs) You keep me learning. (laughs) But, But it's good. But I would have sometimes a little more extra time, time that I don't have now. But I, and I would put in Gloria's tapes and I would listen to them all. And Gloria really was and is a mentor to me in ministry, in life, in family. Um, and so we've been able to grow such a a, a precious and cherished friendship. Yes. Um, just beyond the employer yes. employee. Um, yes. So that, that I am so thankful for. Well, you are God's gift to us and our ministry so much. And it was cute to watch her as they began to have their family. And and she'd multitask. (laughs) And I mean, and of course, if you don't make much in a small town for pay, Mm -hmm. and if you're going to pay off for a babysitter, Mm-hmm. And that's costly. So we would just um, bring your bring your baby to work. Yes. Put the bring, put in the basket, you know. And I come in there, and she would <laughs> she'd be on the phone, and she might be there would be Beating nobody the in the office. Everything yeah. on, and the baby in her arms, and then she'd be typing. She was multitasking all of this stuff, and uh, so it was really neat to know that those little kids could be in there next to mom. It, it was, wasn't always easy for mom. But... It, it wasn't always as easy. I mean, no. obviously, uh, children um, need your attention, and so do the work tasks that you have, and so trying to sometimes just manage all of those <laughs> meant an exhausting day, but I was so thankful um, that you allowed us that that opportunity. It wasn't just me. It was also some other employees that have worked here that you were so gracious um, to allow us to bring our children and what an absolute gift that that was to us. Absolutely. Well, fam- it's a family ministry and mm-hmm. that's what we do. Yeah. So I have to some few other pictures there. Can you want to roll up? I a did so this fun one um just takes us back to um just the times <laughs> on on the farm. You know, oh, you would have yes. Mayana uh, in the summers. And so she yeah. came out, loved babies. You can see, you know, in the background there's <laughs> a yeah, little, Mayana. Yeah, a little a little baby tote and yes. oh. uh, she would play with Aspen and help out while we were working on on the house <laughs> and Larry always cuddling the kids which was so fun <laughs> and this is the kids at work I couldn't find ones of um you know of my first two at work even though I knew I had them um but this would be Callie <laughs> you can see she's up on the counter got her toys uh, love it, love it. Look at her little feet. She's just all comfy, all dressed up and comfy. <laughs> yeah, you learn sometimes that you needed to have suckers or <laughs> different, <laughs> different ways of bribery to to keep them quiet when you're on the phone or something. Oh yes, but, you know. I'm very well aware of that with Larry. I have yes. to <laughs> candy, suckers. Candy. I like candy. <laughs> Keeping. But she's it. so cute. She's God's special gift to you. She has brought you so much joy into so many people. 
my yes. mind. Yes. And she's, she's just funny. Like. She's fun and funny. Mm -hmm. And yet uh, you had a picture a few months ago we showed of her in your living room where you play worship music. Yes. And she was just walking worshiping and with her little yes. hands in the air. Yes. Yeah. Love yeah. that. Love yeah. That. One of our favorite things right now. And and it's just it's one of those gifts. You 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 just you absolutely love it is uh she sings you know songs all the time but especially on our way into school or work or church or wherever we're heading leaving our house and coming to Sisseton in that time she starts singing it's just it's what she does and so often it's now become uh kind of guess the song uh just because her words aren't always super clear but she gets the melodies and so she'll and then she'll throw in at least three or four words that you know absolutely what they are and so you're sitting there trying to figure out okay now what song is this so so uh, today's <laughs> was jesus love me jesus loves me oh, um and a lot of times they're worship songs that you know we've all sung um but but today's was jesus loves me and it just oh. made me smile i'm like ah oh, because yeah. it, honestly it sets my heart in the right space as mm -hmm. i'm heading into work or you know kind of tackling the day um you know we kind of start it together uh focusing on jesus and it, it's such a, yes. it's such a gift to me what I, a joy. i'm so thankful mm -hmm. and your wonderful parents and yes. and kirk is a wonderful pastor your wonderful pastor's wife and everything you you wear many 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 hats let me ask you a quick question what would be probably what, what was one of the toughest challenges for you i guess maybe you touched on that of learning but you're the type that uh I love working with you because when we work, we work, and when we don't, we don't. But we work, we work well together. Mm -hmm. I mean, amazingly well. Mm -hmm. But what's probably the hardest thing you've had to do, or disappointing thing, uh, not in ministry, but um, just well in life, of uh, in ministry, in job, or whatever. What what's probably been maybe come the hardest? When you're thinking through 25 years, it's a lot. You I know, a lot, like, of, man, a lot of everything. Every season has its 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 different things. You know, in the earlier seasons, it was so much about um, learning just about life and who yes. you know who I am, and you know, teenagers. You kind of think you know a lot of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of think you have things somewhat figured out, and you've got your desires and your dreams, and this is how it's going to work out. And then there's like this whole life of things not going how you always thought they were going to go. And so many things did, but, you know, in, in those first years, the year that Aspen was born, uh, we had Tammy working as a bookkeeper uh, with us at LLM and uh, her husband, Tim, was my husband's best friend. And, you know, we worked very closely together together. Uh, we spent a lot of time together and he, he died in a plane crash and it was so devastating um, just in itself and kind of shaking up. Um, and then we had Aspen and she was, you know, your first child and, and uh, she screamed 24 seven. And so you're trying to work, you're trying to function, you're trying to figure out what is wrong with my baby? What am I doing wrong? And my diet was down to just nothing thinking, you know, something that I was eating was affecting her. Um, and so it was, and, and then in that time frame. Tim died. And so it was just these stresses no. after stress after stress. And that was in our first three years of marriage where you're still Whoa. figuring each other out. And, you know, yes. now you're walking through loss and you're walking through hardship and, you know, just real life, real life. And, and so I remember those moments and, you know, uh, 15 years ago, I would have said, man, that was the hardest thing I had gone through. Um, and at that time, <laughs> and then that you was, woke up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> at that time, that it goes on. was, but I look back and I see the grace of God. You know, you've, you've heard about people so many times when they go through a difficult thing and how they look back and they say, but I could, now I can see the grace of God or now I yes. can see how God was carrying me. And yes, I can look back yes. at that time and I can see that. And then as you continue on in life, I think expectations 
is a really hard one. Mm-hmm. I knew how to work hard. Um, you know, we would work our regular jobs and then every free moment we were building a house or planning or, you know, trying to pay for it or obviously spending time with the kids and youth ministry. And I don't know if you know this about ministry, but you know, it's not a nine to five job. It, no. it, you know, there's Sometimes a one, 2 AM in the morning. With yes, the exactly. And so you're navigating all these different things and you would pour out and you would pour out and you would pour out. And, and I remember when we were in the midst of building the house and you were, we were, the only way that we could move forward was saying, what is the project for today? What are we doing today? What is the thing on the task today? I'm not going to get overwhelmed by the huge house that needs windows, that needs siding, that needs sheetrock, that needs, you know, trim and everything. What is the project for today? And so Kirk and I would tackle that project and see how far we could get. And it was so rewarding because at the end of the day, you could see the progress. You could see, okay, we got, you know, the roof on and it's ready for shingles or we got, you know what, you know, the shingles on, or we got some roof trusses up or, you know, whatever those things were, there was a very measurable amount Mm -hmm. of success, but ministry does not have a measurable way to count success because you're working with people. Uh And sometimes you don't see the fruit of that seed until Uh years and years later. And so you can just pour and pour and pour and pour and not always see, um, see that fruit. And Uh so that could be really discouraging. And so one of the things that we, the hardest things that we went through were sometimes showing up when there was two kids or one kid in the youth room and going, this maybe hurts our heart. This feels discouraging, but we're going to keep showing up. We're going to keep being there. And so by, by having people surround us, whose uh, hearts were geared toward faithfulness no matter how hard it was, no matter what the ups or downs were, uh, no matter maybe what they felt like in the moment, we're going to keep showing up. We're going to keep showing up. And faithfulness began to be woven into the fabric of who Kirk and I are. And there's still times when (laughs) things don't feel measurable. You're like, I don't know if you know, I don't know if we're doing any good. (laughs) Like, I feel like we are, but you know, I I can't necessarily put the measuring stick on it and say, here it is. Um, But we know that we're showing up to be faithful. We know that we are following God's voice to the best of our abilities through the word and his spirit and through, um, you know, godly people that, that have uh, surrounded us. And, and so, you know, the hardest things have been different in every season. Yes. Um, but but you know, learning for to me, be faithful. So, yeah, faithfulness. But to me, uh, I've always said, Larry's heard me say for years, I said, she's God's gift to our ministry. Yes, she is. And I said, to, I said she has so much potential from, from her parents, which she's inherited from her parents, her grandparents. I mean, the people who poured into your life. And I say, I just know she can do this. I know she can do more than that. And to watch you grow through the years and go from one area to growing into another area to another area. And then to watch in the last, you know, few years that, you know, you're writing and, uh, you know, you're, uh, so you're writing things and you're a co-host on our program and, and you know, all these things that, that yeah. God has just given you this talent and uh, the ministry and how you are now mentoring other people. And that's the greatest joy that we see because that's what ministry is, yeah. that we want to pour into other lives. Mm-hmm. We want to see their, their lives challenge other people, see their lives just be there to say, hey, you can do this and to see God bless yes. them. It's been exciting. So what's your next goal? Oh, wow. I, I know what I've said. You know what <laughs> I've told you is to write, the, you have to write a book. And so we just said, you know, it's time. We got to get a book going there. And she's have... a great writer. And she has, she takes, you know, life stories and people like 
life stories. She's deep. Yeah, she's deep. <laughs> she's deep. <laughs> I, you know, I, I have had a lot of people uh, tell me to write a book. Um, and that I have, I have not even shared this publicly, but um, I even had someone at one time when it, it wouldn't have even been a thought. You know what I mean? Like it wouldn't oh, have yes. even been a glimmer say, you're going to write a book someday. And I'm like, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> not, my sister, she's the good writer. I'm, you know, and, and so I, I am just, I, I am waiting, I guess I, I'm, I'm living each day and I'm as, as God brings the stories up and as he highlights different things and I write about them, I just, I put them so they can be recorded somewhere, whether, um, you know, it's a website or on Facebook or, or in a newsletter, uh, whatever it is. Um, and, and I'm just trusting that in God's timing, he's set, definitely going to, um, kind of urge me at the right time to do that. Yes. Um, I'm the timing. Really, yeah, timing. And and I'm just really open to I'm really open to God. What what do you want from me? So I'm I'm faithfully continuing to serve you guys um with what I have. I serve at our our church uh um, you know, leading worship. Um I've had a couple of different speaking opportunities which still make my knee shake. Uh but yeah, but him, great. <laughs> but um so i just want to have an open heart of yes to whatever god calls me to do and uh i guess that's where where he leads me is where i go it's probably not not the best thing to say i don't necessarily have a goal i would say that my goal is to honor jesus with everything that's within me and yes. and that yes. really <clears throat> when i was younger i probably had a few more solid aspiration and dreams like this is what things are going to look like and I think as I've um, grown a little bit older I just want my yes to be big to him yes and yes. where he leads me yes. I just want to go and be brave enough to take the steps I need to take um, but also to be wise enough to know when he's taking telling me to take those steps yes and you've done it well yes. and you you've been our great encourager our family loves you they just you know you're like the other men you're like the other daughter you know and they they're just proud of you they're so yes. they feel so safe knowing that you're trustworthy that you have such a pure heart that you're there they feel safe knowing that uh you're watching over us and the ministry uh so thank you so much for 25 years, I mean, I just can't hardly believe it's been 25 years. Uh, no. It's been a delight. It has been great. It's been God-given time. I've grown through knowing you. Larry's, we've both yes. grown. You know, we've taught each other. We've just, you know, we've cried together. We've prayed. Mm -hmm. We've laughed together. We've done it all. We've yes. done it all. We've seen yes. it all. And mm -hmm. so we just, you know, we're not, this isn't a goodbye deal today, but don't really, I don't want anybody thinking, oh, <laughs> no, she's leaving. No. no, she's leaving. Or the ministry said, no, we're still here. But we did really want to honor you because yes. 25 years and you, you've invested your life in ministry and you've touched thousands. And now through co-hosting and through in the newsletter with your articles, my goal is to get you, it sounds like a goal to sound, that sounds <laughs> Whatever. But it's our prayer that you continue to grow to be that blessing that you know that God has called you to do and to be and to be where he wants you to be at that time. So we love you. We thank you. And um, this has been really fun because I just thought this would be great for people to get to know you a little yes. bit more each time because there will be a day that I'll probably be in, in a motel six foot under, but you'll still be on top six foot up and you'll be going and touching lives. And that's what it's all about. There was a verse that I want to just read here uh, in closing. And it says here, as this is in first Peter four, 10, 11, as each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's very grace. Whoever speaks as one who speaks oracles of God, Whoever serves is one who serves by the strength that God supplies in order that everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. To him belong glory and dominion forever and ever. 
Amen. So yes. we thank you that you are the gift yes. to our family, to our ministry, and to all of our thousands of people yes. who are getting to know and have followed us through the years. So I thank you for that. So if you want to tell them uh, to encourage your friends to share this with somebody, would you do that, Marty? I can. <laughs> feels very odd <laughs> here <laughs> learn about me but thank you so much for um the privilege and the honor uh, for 25 years i'm like that is uh, currently more than half of my life um <laughs> that i have been able to uh invest in uh the ministry and 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 to just come alongside you and to help in whatever way i can and i'm just so honored for the privilege and just the learning journey that it has been and so if you would like to hear this more again or share it with someone by the end of the day we will have this uploaded to www.larrylundstromministries.org just click in the top uh just go to the front page the cc live banner and if you uh go to the first cc live video it will be this one as it is the most recent click in the top right hand corner the three white dots and that will open up a link so that you can share it however you would like thank you thank and you. Uh, this has been fun happy mother's day to yeah. all you out there and a happy birthday to happy birthday to oh, you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> happy birthday. i know he's gonna bake me a cake i just know it yes i'm sure i believe in is. miracles yeah <laughs> so have a great week everybody we love you have a great memorial day weekend and we have we're gonna have be sure uh tune us in again and uh we just love you thank you for your prayers and your support have a great day and finish my next yeah. cup of coffee bye-bye yeah. <laughs> bye years ago in south dakota the lundstrom's knelt in prayer to god one night there the Savior sent us with the message That we should sing about eternal life We've been rolling down that long, lonesome highway Traveling to help our fellow man And we'll keep traveling on Singing a happy song Until we hear God's call to glory land a lot of friends in all our travels. We're so blessed. We know their prayers have helped us stay alive. And we're so thankful. So if you ever feel impressed to mention my name, then you know it's my turn to drive. We've been rolling down that long, lonesome highway, traveling to help our fellow man. And we'll keep traveling on, singing out song until we hear God's call to glory land. And we'll keep traveling on, singing a happy song until we hear God's call to glory land.